So over the past few days I've been uh, very encouraged by not just the number of sessions on nature-based solutions to the causes and consequences but also the general quality and it really does seem that the message is finally getting through that to deliver on Paris we really need to scale up our protection, restoration and sustainable management of uh, natural resources and there are now lots of studies and a growing awareness that you know if we restored the natural environment we could meet not just 30% of the uh, mitigation goal of the Paris Agreement, we'll go a long way towards meeting a global adaptation goal. You know, natural resources when properly managed can confer a great deal of resilience on human communities. Um, so that's really good to get, you know, that that's getting across and in fact 60% of ratifying nations have committed to um, the protection and restoration of uh, ecosystems in general and forest in particular. The other thing that I'm very encouraged by is the presence and the prominence of the indigenous voice here at COP. So, um, Take Amazonia, for example. I went to a session yesterday on the role of um, Amazonian indigenous people in the NDCs. And um, Amazonia, if we lose Amazonia, so important is that forest in the regulation of global climate and, and as a source of resilience with all its genetic diversity, that if we lose it, um, then we basically lost the battle against um, climate change. But the very interesting thing about Amazonia is that 30% of it occurs within indigenous people's territories. and. Rates of deforestation are an order of magnitude slower inside these territories than outside. So to really, um, if we really want to talk about ambition in terms of the Paris Agreement, we really do need to make sure that these people, these communities are heavily involved in the design and not only the implementation of, of climate policy. So overall I'd say there's definitely here in the Bond Zone um, at least, you know, the, the idea that to deliver on Paris um, we're going to, it's going to take nothing short of um, a global transformation in um, the economic system so that our economy is built not on the destruction of the natural environment but on careful stewardship of the natural world. Now this is um, a message that's been loudly trumpeted here. Um, but many might argue that the bond zone is an echo chamber and what's really important is what's going on over there in the Buller zone and the negotiating rooms and the sense that I'm getting is that um, on the issues of nature-based solutions, on the importance of nature-based solutions to climate change, mitigation and adaptation, there's largely silence over there and that really needs to be addressed moving forward. So tomorrow I'll be speaking in two events, one at noon, which is an event hosted um, as part of the biodiversity and climate change series. This is a lecture series that's been running all week, um, which is hosted by the uh, University of the UN um, and part organised under the Friends of EBA, which is part of the NIUCN initiative. And I'll be talking then about um, quality and standards of criteria for including conservation and nature-based solutions and ecosystem-based adaptation in the national determined contributions. In the afternoon, um, I'll be speaking um, with a variety of people on the topic of nature-based solutions and their prominence in the NDCs and where we need to move forward in terms of raising the bar um, in terms of targets and um, how we measure um, success towards a global adaptation goal.